The Onyx NX Touch is one of my favorite PC console wings because it gives an incredible price and allows you to get going with Onyx and create a really great show. So if you've gotten an Onyx Touch or maybe um, for some reason you ended up with one, one's at your venue or your church or uh, somebody gave one to you and you don't know where to get started, I created this basic video just to show you how to get started with Onyx and how to get rolling really fast, okay? So this is the NX Touch. This is the older version, which was made by another brand, but I've blacked out the names. And so it's exactly with the same thing you're looking at in front of you. Now, before you get started, it's important to know that the NX Touch itself doesn't actually have any software running on it. It can plug into Onyx consoles as well as previous Martin M series consoles, and it can plug into PCs to be able to control them. So it doesn't stand alone. It doesn't run on itself, but rather it's a USB control surface that a console or a computer will then be actually running. Now that we've got that taken care of, that means we need the software. So if we go to support.obsidiancontrol.com, and I'll put that on the screen here, we have a big link right on the front page that says get started by downloading the latest version of Onyx. We'll click on that. We'll get the latest version and we'll install it, okay? Then check out my playlist on beginning with Onyx. I've got an Onyx basics playlist that I keep updated with a basic set of tutorials for getting started with Onyx. And that's gonna be really key if you wanna learn how to use this NX Touch because at the end of the day, the Onyx software actually is designed that it, um, no matter what device you use with it, the workflow is the same. It's just the tools that you happen to have in front of you, you know, that you're using can change depending on what you have. So now for this, the second half of the video, I want to just briefly go over the functions that are available on the NX Touch, what all the buttons do, and how you can begin working with them. To do this, I've actually loaded the template file, the file rather, the sample file that comes with Onyx when you download it. And when you press load on the home screen, you'll then find it in the folder called samples and it's the Onyx training show. This just gives us some stuff to work with though certainly you can work with your own show as well. So the very first thing I wanna highlight on this control surface is the 10 playback faders, okay? These are on the bottom of the screen here inside of Onyx and they are 10 faders that can have many cues on them. So you could put just one cue on them like this first one has. It's just a simple um, submaster type cue or like this last, these last two that have 12 and eight cues on them. You could have many cues, even more than that. I believe hundreds of cues. I'm not sure if there's actually a limit. Maybe it's 999, but Regardless, this is where they pop up in the screen. When we go in with our keypad here or on our touch and we go ahead and press record, press a playback, we are then recording on the screen to the playbacks at the bottom and on the NX touch right here at these 10 faders, okay? Now, if you're looking to change the function of the faders as you get into the NX touch, we can right click on any of the playbacks and then we get this window that pops up. If we go to function assignments, we'll be able to change the function of the top button, which is here, the secondary top button called the up button, and this one's called the up up, and then also the down down button as well as the fader. Uh, the touch does not feature a second button underneath, and so the down action right here does not apply when using the NX Touch. Now, on the NX Touch, you actually have, by default, these multifunction buttons in the middle are playbacks, and they're here on the screen on 11 through 20. I could double click to get those at the bottom here. I can record to them, or I can record and press the button, and then that's going to record that cue list there. As you can see, now it lights up. Now I can use it. These buttons are actually multifunction, which is really helpful. So. If I select some lights in Onyx, I can toggle this over to base by holding in a, a longer press. And I have access here on my screen 
to the different parameter groups inside of Onyx, the different ways that you can control lights. Then if I pop over to effects, just by hitting a quick click, I'm able to work with the effects engine, able to work with the effects timing part of that, the fanning, the grouping, and the rate as applicable. Now, these are really cool because they're green right now, but if I were to modify anything in them um, on, under the base parameters, as I modify different parameters, we can see here, it turns red to show me that I've used that parameter or green if I haven't touched it at all. Now, on the other side of this four-way toggle, we can go to playback again, and a quick toggle takes us to F key, where we can actually assign function keys to these buttons, which is really cool. We can actually press edit and hold the key. So hold edit, press the key, and I'm able to unlock my workspaces. And so now I'm able to go, once I enter that edit mode, I can go down here to functions, select the key that I want to modify. As I can see here, it's blinking, which means I've got it selected, and I'm able to go between these different keys and give them different functions. It lights up once it's assigned. So those are the functions there. Moving on, as you probably saw just a minute ago, when I've gone in here, say I'm in base mode again, and I've selected perhaps pan tilt, over here on the right, these four faders are my encoders. Now, they're just simple strips that I can use to modify the values of the lights so that I actually wouldn't have to have this window popped up in the display taking up space. They work just like encoder wheels like you might find on other consoles and they're really handy. A few tricks with them is if you want to select a particular channel, you can do so by pressing these buttons at the top that will select those attributes. And you're able to go ahead and go through your fixtures, change them all, or use last and next to toggle through different fixtures. You can also use highlight to make a fixture turn to white and open up whatever you've assigned the highlight to is where that will go. It's really useful for identifying different lights as you're working with them. Okay, now we've got two last spots to check out on the surface. First, we have our command keys here, record, edit, update, load, and clear. Those are all parts of the console. Record, of course, for recording and clear for clearing. Um, we'll press clear twice to clear out fully in Onyx. But I encourage you to check out the online manual and the other resources available on Learn Stage Lighting that go into detail on how to use these different functions. Last but not least, we've got the buttons over on the left side. We're able here to switch between different banks of our playbacks. So you can see here it went out because I'm in a completely different fit row of faders here. And that's one of the things I love about the faders in Onyx because as you can see here, I've got different types of faders here at the bottom of my screen and those different types light up in different colors. That's really powerful. Not only that, but because it's a technically faderless design, it acts like you have motorized faders. So switching between pages is absolutely seamless and it's always going to recall your fader position as you change. Now there's also a beat button here, which is useful for tapping chases. We can select different playbacks by using the select key and the button. We can use snap and release, which allow us to do any number of things. Snap, if we hold it, will make all of our cues come in at zero time. So they, they ignore their fade. And release allows us to release the selected cue list or any cue list that we tap while holding release. Whereas snap and release, We'll let go of every cue list inside of the console. Last but not least, we've got the pause back and go buttons. And these guys apply to whatever cue list is selected, which again, if we press select and press the cue list, it selects. If we press it on the screen, it selects. We get the white box around it and we see at the top of the screen the name and the uh, particular information as to what numbered cue list that is. Then we know that these controls apply to it. Awesome. I know that was a whirlwind of information and it's a really good introduction though to the NX Touch. If you just got one or you're thinking about getting one, I hope this opened your eyes. So be sure to check out my other videos on Onyx here on YouTube and also my full post on Learn Stage Lighting about getting started with Onyx. It's gonna walk you through 
all the different resources I have, including my Onyx Masterclass, where you can learn how to use Onyx in about an hour, hour, 15 minutes with me via a recorded masterclass. And also the premium resources that I have available inside of Learn Stage Lighting Labs. Don't miss any of it. It's linked to, to below and some of it's linked here at the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.